Joining us now is our favorite part of St. Mary's College. The best part of St. Mary's is he right is here. He the play-by-play -play man of the Gales, Alex Jensen. Alex, welcome back, my What's up, friend. Alex? Fellas, good to be here. It's been a while. Normally we're talking on the phone. I know. We're in person. Here we are. I know. Hey, I, I forgot what you guys look like almost till I got here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a radio show, too, I guess. But let, let's just get this out of the way. St. Mary's doesn't need this game. You guys are in the tournament. Could BYU just get this one? We need it more than you. Hey, we, we talked about this before. All right, now, Coming from Moraga, we know heartbreak on Selection Sunday, so we're taking no chances. Okay, so this Fine. is it. This is, is interesting. 20th ranked team, but because Gonzaga and St. Mary's typically aren't as high as they have been in the RPI, you you feel oh, Gonzaga's not worrying. It's okay, I know they're Mary's. in, but like yeah. uh, they're the seventh ranked team in the country, and they're a projected four or five seed. They just need to get in. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay, but you guys are nervous you're, because you're, two years ago you had what 27, 20, 27 20, wins and, and didn't, didn't make get in. it. Didn't get in. But this team feels different. I don't. I don't I don't this know. team feels different, and the bubble feels different this year. It, it's kind of a weaker bubble. This team has 28 wins. Like I, 28, I'd be Alex. I, I'd be shocked if the. But still, I mean, I, it, those scars last a long time, man. <laughs> those scars last a long time. Don't every, we know it? Yeah. <laughs> well, <that's true. laughs> Don't we? Five in know a row. It. Yeah. Okay. So right now, I mean, St. Mary's. Let's say uh, they beat BYU but lose to Gonzaga. I mean, what's the projected seed for the Gales? Ooh, I'd say nine or ten, maybe. I mean, after after losing to USF, if, if you take that USF loss out, you know, I think you're looking at probably a single-digit seed. But, I mean, outside of the win at Gonzaga, you know, St. Mary's doesn't have many of those RPI-boosting wins. Right. I think didn't that's the help only, you as sure. much as maybe you thought this year. Right. And, and normally that would be one of those quadrant one wins. Right now St. Mary's only has one. So... You know, I mean, the bubble's weak, but again, <laughs> I've been in Moraga for a few of those selection Sundays where there's been plenty of heartbreak, and the Gales have been going to the NIT. It's just, I don't want to leave it anything to chance, guys. Yeah, Sorry. Now, 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 listen. Fine, listen. we'll play the game listen, straight up. If BYU beats St. <laughs> Mary's tonight, the Cougars will be inside RPI 75, okay? Which means St. Mary's won in Provo, so that's they'd why, have another quad one win. That's why St. Mary's just needs to lose. <laughs> you get a quad one. You get, you get another quad one game. You'll have a quad one win. Well, BYU did help St. Mary's out by beating San Diego because if should the Gales lose this game tonight, uh, obviously it wouldn't. Their RPI wouldn't take as much of a hit. I think BYU's at 80 as of this morning. Yeah, Is we stopped right? paying yeah. attention once BYU lost to LMU. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We were looking at the RPI. Look, look well, at this. We, hey, we saw LMU's not that bad. I mean. It, they gave Gonzaga a pretty good run for their money for yes, three quarters of that game. Yes, they it's did. It's March. That's it my only March. explanation. It yeah, March. Yeah, but in this tourney, there's no real upsets. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, so and so got close. Good job. What would you call Pepperdine over Santa Clara an upset? Yes, but it's what was technically? That? Yes, I don't think I would call that an upset. But I mean, like, though. none of the big three lose an early game. It just doesn't really have. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> We're in the semis. You know. Yeah. Why, why are you so nervous? I'm looking at Lenardi here. You're a nine this morning, St. Mary's. Lenardi's burned us before. <laughs> Not Lenardi. It's Tom Homo in the uh, selection nice. committee. <laughs> We're hoping he's in our corner, so at least, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Jock Landale has dominated BYU more than any other player dominated. Is there another word that we can use besides dominate? Is there a stronger word? Is there an Australian word? 30-plus uh, 30, 30 in two games. Hey, has a formula been been out there from San Francisco and Gonzaga and even maybe even Pepperdine how to slow him down somewhat well I think you saw it starting in the Gonzaga game in Moraga and really to be honest St. Mary's has not looked quite the same since that game uh you know Gonzaga sending double teams at, at Jock and uh they've got some some serious length and and some bigger lineups they can throw out there uh, but the difference to me, outside of Jock, I think he's done what he's had to do against those double teams. You'll see him dribble it out to Quinn. He's a really good passer. I mean, you guys have seen that this year. But if you take those two Pepperdine games out uh, in the last six games of the season, that Gonzaga game included, St. Mary's is 14 to 59 from three. So this is a team that came into that game uh, against Gonzaga in the top five or six in three-point percentage in the country. And they fell going into the Pepperdine game last night all the way down to 19, which this late in the season – that's a pretty big drop, you know. So uh, it's really got to fall on Tanner Krebs, Calvin Hermanson, Jordan Ford, who's been playing really well, by the way, uh, and Emmett Nard to knock down shots. Evan Fitzner's in there, too. He had a couple big shots in Provo. They need those guys to knock down some shots. It opened up things in the middle for, for Jock. You can't double uh, off of one of those guys if they prove that they can knock down a couple shots, uh, especially early in the game. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, we, we've seen if Jock is able to go one-on-one, -on -one, you know, for 30 minutes, 
it can be a handful. We obviously. watched it two games worth. Yeah, of that's that. true. Yeah. That, that's what I said <laughs> early in the show. I feel like the X factor for St. Mary's is their ability to shoot the three ball tonight. Because there will be openings. Yes, there will be. Absolutely. If they knock them down, and, the Gales are in business. And against Pepperdine, you look, 11 of 22 from three, four of seven from Hermanson, three of five for Ford, four of six from Nard. Didn't Hermanson hit three in the last five minutes? I was just going to say, Calvin was one of six going into those those three threes from the floor. Made up for so, it. And, and him and Krebs, I, those, those are the two guys to me that need to show up. Krebs hit a couple big shots against the Cougars this year. He hit a few big shots against Gonzaga. Uh, the, again, the last... You know, since that Gonzaga game the last few weeks, he just hasn't been knocking down shots at the same clip. And it, listen, I mean, it's, you're all the time in the NBA, right? It's a make or miss league. Guys are going to go through slumps. So he's a guy that, that St. Mary's really needs to shoot. And they need, a, like I said, a guy like Evan Fitzner coming off the bench to be aggressive. Colin Neal, he only had two minutes the other night against Pepperdine. Stay aggressive. He, you know, they, he, they've got to stay confident and, and do what they do, right? I mean, like, listen, we, we saw against San Diego the level that Elijah Bryant and Yoli Childs are playing at right now. You're throwing T.J. Hawes there as well. So uh, you need everything you can get. You need all these guys uh, to, to give you what they have been giving you for the most part this season. The short shorts battle between Cullen Neal and Zach Selyus is a real thing. Solid. That That is as good as it gets. How many times can you fold up your waistband? <laughs> yeah. Does Selyus go tights underneath? He has before, but sometimes he's he not, doesn't. I know he's Cullen not does. Yeah. Yeah. He was going one tight. One That's leg. You know, you see more of that, though. Like now. the leg lamp from the Christmas story or whatever. <laughs> like, what is that? I saw some ladies carrying around a, a drink with the leg. You know, like, it's a weird deal, right? I feel like it started with the, you know, the arm sleeves. Yes. Just the one arm sleeve, right? One. Now you see it going to, going down to the legs. I, I don't know what's happening with basketball fashion. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> and and I, I just remember Della Vadova showing up, and he'd have the the sleeve, and he'd have the mouthpiece, and I was like, this guy's going to elbow someone in the face. Like, no one show. Like when that guy shows up to pick up, you're like, I don't want to guard that guy. Yeah, He's going to get me right in the nose, man. I have no room to talk. I wore socks up to my knees like Keith Van Horn when but I this was, in high school. But this so. was... You're allowed to say that name on the set? <laughs> We're saying I Alex Jensen, right? former <laughs> youth, That's as true. Well. Yeah, we talked about that <laughs> yesterday or the other day, actually. Alex Jensen, the play-by-play man for St. Mary's, is with us on BYU Sports He did not Nation. play for Utah in that 98 Final Four team. We just want to make nope. that clear. Although 12 he years did, old. He did <laughs> play baseball for St. Mary's. That's yeah, true. Yeah, 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 he did do that. What's the number one concern for St. Mary's when you look at the BYU team, whether you know individual or team? Like, what, What's the number one thing that concerns you and St. Mary's win this matchup? Well, I listen, it's hard not to say one of the big three, so I'll, I'll go a different direction. I thought McKay Cannon played really well against San Diego. I thought, I mean, I called that game uh, on Sirius XN. And I, I thought he was uh, a difference man. I don't think BYU wins that game without McKay Cannon. I he mean, had he, five assists, and he, I don't think he had a turnover. He had steals, five assists. Yeah. There were there were a couple of huge plays. There was a defensive uh, rebound for San Diego. I think it was early in the second half, and he was, you know, lying on the floor, and he comes from behind, takes the ball away, and I can't remember if he scored or if he just got BYU an extra possession. But that's the that's the little type of stuff uh, that he can come in and do and get extra. I, I really think this game is going to come down to, uh, you know, who's able to get those extra possessions, who's able to dive on the floor for those loose balls. And I think that's what McKay Cannon brings you. So Elijah Bryant, obviously one of the best players, uh, you know, in, in the conference, if not the best player in the conference, at least on the perimeter. Uh, Yoli Childs, we've seen the battles that he and, and Jock have gone through. I've told you guys what our coaching staff uh, thinks of T.J. Hawes. And he, you, I think you mentioned the spinning bucket after uh, Bryant fouled out. That was another key point in the game. But I'll say a guy like McKay Cannon can really come in and make a difference uh, in a game like this, getting extra possessions. That's uh, next level. Alex, you're the silver lining. I mean, if BYU loses to St. Mary's again, I, I'm always like, well, at least I like Alex. <laughs> 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 so thanks for giving us some sort of yeah. silver lining. Well, man. I appreciate that, guys. Like I said, you guys are way too nice to me, but I'll take it, man. <laughs> <laughs>